I'm no professional narrator, so I'm just going to tell the story like it is. It's been a couple years since Ghost of Tsushima came out, and I figured it was time to start a new playthrough. This one would be to do all the stuff I never thought to do before. How could I make Jin Sakai the most terrifying force the island had ever known? How far could I stretch the game to make Jin do the most vile and dishonorable things possible? It started with a few ideas. What if I only used poison and stealth? But soon that got boring because no one ever saw me. Then I tried making my presence known by decapitating lore lords and going immediately into the ghost dance. Now that was getting me somewhere. I strengthened my build so that I would have as much terrifying ability as possible, making nearly every unharmed enemy fall to the ground in fear. Then I would choose to prolong their terror and finish them off with a brutal, fiery stab to the chest or waste a sticky bomb just to see it explode in their face. You must enjoy this. You're not human, a peasant told me, and I laughed. It's all fun and games after all. None of it's real. And I had played normal playthroughs before, so why not just go all out maniacal on the enemies of Tsushima? It's not like I was hurting anyone. Occasionally, my ghost weapon ambushes didn't always kill my opponents, and so I'd see tons of them crawling on the ground. I watched as they would travel only a few meters before collapsing and passing out to their deaths. The square prompt to end suffering glowed incessantly over their bodies. But no, I would never choose it. I would make them suffer, all the way to the end. And that's when I felt truly powerful. I gotta admit, a couple times in the playthrough, I did come across some unusual bugs. Characters not rendering correctly, Seeing characters simply disappear from cutscenes, I never really saw that before. I mean, it wasn't just any NPC, it was usually Lord Shimura for some strange reason. I wasn't purposefully breaking the game, it just happened by itself. But I shoved it off as my game getting old and the data slowly corrupting. Who knows, perhaps I wouldn't have much longer to play on this old PS4 anyway. It was late one cold October evening when I wondered how I would play the end of Act 2. Obviously I wasn't fighting alone anymore, and I had NPCs interacting with me. Well, I figured I would go with as much of my role playing as possible and see what would happen. I used blow darts, ghost weapons, and explosive arrows to carve my way through the masses of enemies, bodies piling up with blood drenching their armor. I fought slowly so as to savor every kill. And if any enemy got terrified or mortally wounded, I would gloat over them until their untimely demises. It was highly amusing, considering everyone around me was fighting like normal human beings. Blah blah blah. The bridge gets blown up, and I have that argument with Shimra. I put a grotesque mask on for the whole debate, and it was just funny to see Shimra take Jin so seriously. It really is all just a simulation. And since I knew how the story was going, I wasn't really invested as I used to be. Finally, I got to the infiltration mission, and using some special tricks, I managed to blow dart almost every Mongol on my way to poisoning their drink. Enemies spawned infinitely, but I kept killing until I had no more weapons. It was thrilling, it was addicting, and I didn't want it to end. But finally, I went in to fight Ruzo. And it was, again, kind of funny to see him worrying about me breaking my uncle's code. Man, since day one I was trolling this game. You're gonna tell me now that I was being dishonorable? I laughed some more, and of course beat the crap out of him. So long, old friend. Now we came to one of my favorite cutscenes in the whole game. Lord Shimura calling out Jin on his defiance. I was really into this when, for a split second, I saw something strange. I took a video clip of it. And when the scene was over, I went back to my gallery to rewatch it. True enough, for a split second, Lord Chimra's NPC model looked at the camera, and notably at the line, and you were acting like the enemy. I went on YouTube to watch an upload of the same cutscene, and true enough, this is never supposed to happen. Whoa, what are the odds of that? I had never seen anything like that in my hundreds of hours of Ghost of Tsushima. As a joke, I renamed the clip honor.exe and hope to share it with some friends later. I have to admit that while it was funny, I remembered the other glitches I had earlier, and then I had this 
uneasy feeling in the back of my mind. By the time I went back into the game, Jin was in the prison cell. Just then, I got a notification from my PS4. Controller disconnected. Battery low. Dang it, I forgot to charge it earlier. I could plug it in, but I was tired as it is, and also I wasn't really looking forward to watching my horse die yet again. So, I left Jin in that prison cell, put my PS4 to sleep, and got ready for bed. It was about 2.30 in the morning, and it was much colder than other nights that month. I had no problems going to sleep that night since I'm a heavy sleeper, which is why I was rather surprised to wake up to a small beep. I kept my eyes closed because I was so groggy, but a moment later I heard my PS4 turn on the other side of the room. Seriously, my PS4 woke itself up? Was it the controller charger that did it? I ignored it and turned over when I saw from underneath my eyelids a faint white light. My TV across from my bed had turned on, and now the fans in my PS4 sounded like... like breathing. I opened my eyes and looked up. I sat straight up in my bed and scrambled to find my TV remote. It was at my bedside, but when I clicked the power button, it didn't work. Was the controller dead too? I leaped from my bed to try to turn the PS4 off, but the more I pressed the power button, louder and louder the fans began to whir, as if it was going to explode. I ran to the outlet and found the cable that connected the whole entertainment system and yanked it out of its socket. All went dark, and all was quiet. I put in earplugs and wore an eye mask that night, but I was restless and barely got any sleep. I couldn't get that hideous image out of my mind or the words that had originally accompanied it. The next morning, I dared to plug my PS4 and TV back in. As usually happens with a sudden disconnect, the PS4 gave me a warning message that such a power cut will damage or possibly ruin console data. As it tried to reboot, it got stuck on the loading screen, and I was never able to use my PS4 ever again. I hope to get a PS5 in the near future, but I know it's going to be a while before one's available. I decided to move my TV out of the bedroom, into my living room, ever since that night. The feeling of eyes watching me in my apartment persisted for a while, but stepping away from video games altogether has helped a lot. I probably will get back to playing games someday, but what I know for sure, I don't think I'll be playing Ghost of Tsushima anytime soon. I was never able to recover that video clip I made, and so nobody believes my story when I tell them. But I hope you do. Maybe it's time I find some nicer games to play, not as violent. I hope you can understand why.